Welcome to the Dodgers Podcast. I'm Rennie, and this is Chris. We're here today for a special episode dedicated to recognizing two of our incredibly influential women in the league that are graduating this year, with Ellie Shipfer from Miami University and Vanessa Hudson from Kent State University. All right, and we did have Vanessa on our last episode of the podcast, so we did manage to talk to Vanessa a little bit about some of the stuff we're going to be going over. So some of it we're just going to be going over with Ellie first. Um, when Vanessa joined Bodgeball, we had uh, she had said that she had been looking for clubs that were going to be niche programs to join or niche sports to play, and that she had found Dodgeball uh, chalked onto the sidewalk and decided that that was a good idea. Um, Ellie, good. how did you find Dodgeball? Um, so yeah, our like student fair is called Mega Fair, so that's kind of where I found it, but I initially wanted to go for volleyball. Like I was kind of, I knew I wanted to join a club sport, but volleyball was kind of at the top of my radar. Um, but yeah, Dodgeball had such a good spot. It was like at the very corner of like where like the sidewalks would cross. Um, and there were a ton of people at the table. Anna was one of them. Anna and I didn't really talk to each other, but, um, yeah, they kind of caught my eye and then. I had people who were like were living on my floor who were like, you should just go to at least like one practice. So I was like, okay, like it could be fun. Um, showed up. There were like, there were quite a bit of people there. Like we filled two courts and like, it was not like a 12 V 12. Like there were quite a few people on the court. So it was super intimidating for a first practice. Um, but yeah, it was like way more competitive than I thought it was going to be. So I just kept coming back and then got to watch, the team play at OSU in September. And then after that, I was like, okay, this looks cool. Um, so yeah, they kind of hooked me then. But Okay. Yeah, that sounds really fun. Sounds like a good way to start. I think you're one of two out of like five or six women that we've talked to that did not get headshotted at their first practice, or at least didn't mention getting headshotted at their first practice. I don't get headshotted. I remember at one point it was like I almost got drilled by Dom. I don't know if anybody remembers him, but yeah, yeah. He like walked up afterwards. He was like, mm, "I am sorry," but I don't think. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think it actually hit me. Well, that's good. Um, so how long have you played? So I've been playing since freshman year. Um, COVID, I was home for the first semester of my sophomore year, so was only on campus in the spring. Um, but for that one, I mean, we were really only just practicing with like six of us anyway, because recruitment was pretty, pretty hard. But yeah, I have been on since freshman year. Okay. And what year was that? Uh, 2019. Yeah. All of 2019. Awesome. Uh, Vanessa, you joined around the same time, right? All 2019. That means we were at the same tournament as September. I remember yeah. you. Like, oh, you I do? genuinely, yes. <laughs> Like, I genuinely do. Vanessa's okay. known for never remembering anyone at all. Yeah. Uh, the queen of walking up to Dylan Greer and being like, who are you? That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Dylan. I apologize. But at least you know I wasn't fake. I didn't know who you were, so we were having a real conversation. <laughs> All right, and Vanessa, what ha- was your role on your team this past year? Um, I was head captain and uh, president. Awesome. And Ellie, what about you? Same, yeah. Head yeah. captain and president. And you guys are two of the only women that we've ever had in the league that have gotten to be head captain and president, which is absolutely phenomenal and super cool and definitely a step in the right direction, I think. Um, that is big movement for us and I know that a lot of girls look up to you because of that it's really cool for them to get to see that kind of thing um all right and what I'm gonna start with Ellie again what do you think your biggest accomplishment this year with your team was um like as a team like like your accomplishment with your team like can be personal but just like something that you felt accomplished for doing with your team Um, I think just in general, it felt really good when we got to surprise people. Um, I know that there weren't a lot of games that ended up our way, but like one that comes to mind, I remember, well, one, we got our first wins in the second tournament of the year and we were one in 20 last year. So it's like, 
that in of itself was a huge, a huge difference. Um, but I remember at ODC, that game against Ohio, um, it was like we took the first point and we only had 12 people. So it's like your roster is kind of shaky at that point just because everybody's going to get tired. Like, um, but yeah, not only that, but then like after they got up 2 1 on us, like we took another point. So it's like we're entering into the half, into halftime with 2 2. And like nobody in the gym expected that to happen. Um, and just like, yeah, being able to do that again when they came to us for our home tournament, like taking a point against OSU, like at war with 11 people, or it might have been 10. Um, but I just remember hearing on the stream of like the main court, like, oh, like. Miami's up on Ohio State right now or like Michigan State taking the first point and like that was crazy so um yeah it felt really cool to be able to share that with them just because yeah for the fact like past two years we've all been working really hard to like get better and to get those crazy wins and you know we lost some like big seniors you know you have Animal and Beck, Jake, Xander so like some big people but there were quite a few returners, so it felt good that we were able to kind of get better together. Um, yeah. So, like, those wins were exciting. Or not wins, those performances were exciting. Yeah, I know that Caleb Arnold at the half walked up to me, and I was like, you guys are tied with Miami. I wasn't expecting that. And he said, yeah, we've honestly been really underestimating them. And I was like, I keep trying to tell people not to underestimate Miami because I've seen you guys be such good players. Like, you guys have such good chemistry and teamwork. And... We've been really expecting just you guys to take off soon. I think the next couple of years are going to be so good for your team. It's like, it's hard graduating. It's exciting to see, but it's hard with that because it's like, I can see that too. Um, And there were so many moments this year where I felt like we were so close to that, but but like the talent is there. And because of the fact that we focused so much last year on team bonding, like, as you said, like that chemistry is there. Um, So yeah, like as soon as they hit their groove next year, like, they will be scooting. So I'm, I'm excited. That's really awesome. Vanessa, what about you? What do you think your biggest accomplishment with your team has been this year? Um, being able to lead in a way that got us some wins. Um, Kent had, before this season, Kent didn't win a game since 2019. Um, either that or early spring 2020. But it was nice to be able to win a game and know that it's, it wasn't a fluke. It was actually because we had the talent and seeing us grow over the course of the season and play together as a team has really helped. Um, like like Ellie was saying, it's sad to leave, but you know they're going to be all right. And I was um, like last Wednesday, we had our last practice and I was like, oh my gosh, I was just sitting back looking at everybody bonding and talking and just warming up. And I was like, they're going to be good. Like Kent's coming back. They're coming back. Yeah, I personally have gotten to see so much growth from your team, and a lot of the things that you did with them were really impressive. Sometimes even felt like you were dragging them up by the bootstraps when you had to, because you were like, we're not not giving up, we're not losing this, and I am making it to my first Nationals. Yes, it was shaky there at the middle of the season. We were losing some players, and I got nervous. And then we had some last uh, few recruits come in at the very last minute, and they, they helped us a lot think both of your teams once you guys get a few more players in once you guys get a like one one maybe two solid recruiting classes I think your teams are both going to really take off I think also when you guys get more depth and you guys don't have like exactly enough people to just fill a court and like you guys have like subs and stuff so you can rest a little bit I think you guys definitely will like go far and everything which will be awesome to see but sad that you guys aren't gonna be on the court anymore and uh, but <laughs> yeah, you see, me and Renny are both like a little distraught that you guys are graduating. It was funny because so we when we had dodgies like a couple hours ago, Anna was on the phone with us, and we like announced kind of like our new like our new exec and our new captains. And so Anna and I were like, "Wow, like we're we're both irrelevant now." But then. <laughs> We, like, made the joke that, like, we were going to be, like, the crazy, like, the fun ants that come back with, like, the shirts and, like, the signs and stuff like that. So, we're going full soccer mom next year. Yes. So, I'm excited. Absolutely. I don't know where she did it, but I know that Ryan Ginsburg's girlfriend had a printout of his face at Nationals. 
And I, I, I would love that. to see more of those happening. Oh yeah, I think I saw that. that would be <laughs> nice to have at like nationals, especially. But um, Gianni deserved an MVP award for her performance at nationals. She, she did was great. She was hilarious. Awesome. I loved watching her. She was the most enthusiastic girlfriend I have seen come to dodgeball. She deserved like title of coach, honestly. By the end of that tournament, yeah, so. she was doing great. Um, all right, so. What are your guys' plans for after college? Are you guys going to be doing more dodgeball? Vanessa, you want to start? Yes, I'll be playing in the NDA. I'll be on Storm's roster, Northern Storm, uh, name pending, <laughs> but it will be Storm. Um, so I'm excited for that, especially because it's a new league, so that means I don't have to give a pinch. So I'm really excited for that part. So that's my dodgeball plans for the rest of uh, the summer, at least. And Ellie, what are your dodgeball plans for the future? I actually will be at a few tournaments, I think. Um, Ann and I are on the roster for the pickaxers, like UWP team. Mm-hmm. So I actually start school in two weeks. Um, I start PA school in Kettering, so that, that makes it a little bit busy. But yeah, so I'll, I'll be around a few times. Awesome. I'm glad that you guys aren't stopping dodgeball yeah. just because you're done mm-hmm. with college. Or like this part of college it'll be really nice to still see you guys on the courts and everything when if i've right. ended up attending yeah, them but uh. at least since you already kind of started talking about it what is your current post-college plan yes yeah, so i'm going to pa school to be a physician assistant so it'll be i'll be in dayton um at kettering college super small but yeah so um it's like a two yeah two-year program so we kind of locked into that. That's really cool. Vanessa, what about you? Um, actually, I'm spending the rest of the summer uh, getting all my things in order to apply to vet school this uh, next fall. So that's my plan. Uh, what vet schools are you looking at? I'm looking at applying at Ohio State, Michigan State, and uh, Midwestern is on Glendale, Arizona. So those are my top three. If you get into the Arizona school, you should totally start a pinch team. Absolutely not. You know how much work that is? <laughs> well, I'm sure you that... can convince someone to help you. Yeah. Okay. Kevin's over in Colorado right now, so they just make Kevin help. <laughs> yeah, half a flight and we'll get together. <laughs> I mean, if you do end up at MSU or um, OSU, are you thinking about joining their team or... Try to focus more on school and see if you have time or something like that. I've been asked this question a lot recently. I want to say yes, but I know what is required of me in vet school is a very rigorous four-year program. So we'll see. If I do get into Ohio State, which would be like a dream, I guess I, I would still be a part of the dash. I think I could come back a little bit. I don't know if I'll be to every event, but I, maybe. Maybe. Well, it's good that you're still thinking about staying in if you do get into the right school for it. Yeah. We're gonna miss Hughes, so if you come back to NCDA, I'm not gonna be sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of people won't be sad if you end up joining back in NCDA and stuff. That is true. Um, Alright, so we're gonna start with Ellie on this one. What is your favorite dodgeball memory? That is a hard question. Um, I will say one thing. It's going to sound so cheesy when I say it. But, yeah, I will, like, just overall, very grateful for, like, some of the friendships that I got from it. Like, um, I mean, like, my team now, like, it's sad leaving them. But even, like, people that I started with my freshman year, like, you know, I still have a group chat with Ethan, Reed, and Anna. Um, Anna and I, like, even after being long-distance friends for a couple years, like, are still just, like, attached at the hip, um, you know, from a distance. But, yeah, so I'm definitely, like, just, like, very grateful for that because, you know, you kind of have to invest into each other when you spend that much time with folks. Um, and then, like, getting to be a captain with her um, and kind of, like, leading the team and, like, ha- helping to rebuild the team last year. Um, it was just really fun to share with her, but yeah, honestly, like 
I, I know we're going to talk about Nationals because it's kind of the same thing, but two, like, top games that I have in my mind were playing Grand Valley last year and Michigan State this year. Two very fun games. So yeah. if we're talking about, like, an actual game moment, th- it would be those two. All right, Vanessa, what's your in general favorite dodgeball memory? In general, let's see. It's hard because this season has just been so fun and it's the most I've been able to participate so I wanted to say every single tournament we were able to go to because we, I mean, every tournament we went to is because we had just enough people to go to. So my favorite dodgeball memory was having enough to make a roster each tournament we went to. That's always a good one. And we All played right. hard with those nine people. We played hard. <laughs> you guys always put up a fight. You may yeah, only you- have eight or nine people on the court, but you were always putting up a fight every single time. Oh, yeah. It was fun to see you guys with barely enough to <laughs> play and everything and just still showing out and playing you want to know a funny thing i'm so used to playing with like no less than 10 people i mean with less than 10 people because now when i'm on a court with like 12 people i feel crowded i was like why are y'all so close to me like (laughs) Like, (laughs) or like when you start going down under like like down 10 people you have six people left or whatever no one just knows how to spread out and you're just still bunched in like that one little corner if you have people and i'm like why is everybody standing next to me? Like, like spread out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and Vanessa, this past nationals was your first nationals. How was it for you? It was. It was awesome. It was a surreal experience. It was. It, it was everything everybody hyped it up to be. It was extremely fun. I enjoyed myself. It was never a dull moment. I enjoyed everything about this year's nationals. And Ellie, how did you feel about it being your last nationals? It was sad. I like, I mean, it, it was a blast, but I told my team I wouldn't cry because I wasn't going to give them that satisfaction. Um, but then even in the last point, like the game wasn't even over yet against Michigan State. And I'm over there just like, I'm like, get it together, dude. Like, you're not going to do this right now. And then I was like, you will not do the ugly cry. And immediately we get done with like shaking hands. And I like just was bleh. Like, I go up to Dylan at one point, like, asking about refs. Like, I'm just like, okay, like, yeah, I can figure that out. Like, with, like, the, like, teary, blotchy. And he goes, you look like you could use a hug. (laughs) I I refed, I refed that game. I refed the last game. And I saw you. (laughs) And I was like, that's funny, because literally, like, 50 minutes earlier, I just got done ugly crying, because we got eliminated. (laughs) But then what was even worse was, like, once I got myself together... I, like, walk back, and I see freaking Chris and Catherine crying. I'm like, damn, got it, guys. And then, like, the UC guys, and, like, they're my buds. So, like, like I'm sorry. Seeing Brett and Ski cry destroyed my heart. Like, yeah. uh-huh. I was, like, I just, like, have to leave. I was driving two of my guys home, and I was like, guys, like, when I say bye to people, like, I just need you to go get the car and not look at me. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. It was sad, but it was a lot of fun. I was trying so hard to hold it together, and Vanessa comes up to me, like, sounding really sad, and she's like, this is it. And I'm just like, "Mm, don't do that to me. Then she's like, I played my last game, and I just, I'm sitting there, like, trying not to cry, and then Catherine walks up, like, she's like, do you know where Catherine is? And I'm like, no. And I, like, go find Catherine. I'm like, Catherine. (laughs) I think I remember seeing both you and Catherine yeah. like crying and stuff. I think I saw yeah. you a little bit too, Ellie, and I'm just like, dang, this is yeah, really the last time in NCBA. I'm like, <laughs> you don't process it how close rough. you are to other teams until like something like that happens, and you're sitting here there, and you're like, wow, these people are really my friends, and I really love them a lot. <laughs> just, it was hard to like leave, like you know what I mean? Because it's just yeah. like that reality that like it's not actually gonna feel like this. Um, and there's a lot of gratitude there. Like, it's time. Like, I know it's time. But, like, it, it was, like, challenge. I'm like, okay, you got to go. Like, <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I totally understand that feeling. Um, all right. And what is your guys' favorite Nationals memory this year? I'm going to start with Vanessa again. Favorite Nationals memory. My favorite Nationals memory was our elimination game against UVA. And the reason being, we played the best we ever played as a team in that game. And we lost the game 3-2. We almost forced an overtime. And we came out swinging. We went up 2-0. 
And I've never seen us play that much cohesive dodgeball ever this whole entire season. And our coach, Austin, one of our coaches, Austin, had said something, and it really stuck because he said, this is the first time it seems like it just clicked for everybody. And I said, you know what, you're right. Because everybody did what they were supposed to do. Everybody knew what they were supposed to do, and they knew what they could do to help. And that was my favorite memory. None of it got filmed, so nobody will ever know what actually happened in that game. But also, I did play good in that game. I had, like, four catches, so... <laughs> but I got told you that, guys had more catches than kills that game. Yes, that's what that was definitely what helped us in that game. Catches are so underrated sometimes. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, and Ellie, what is your favorite Nationals memory this year? Um, baby one, it was fun staying with Catherine and knowing that we had to play each other the next morning. <laughs> like, but um, that Michigan State game was honestly so much flipping fun. Um, yeah, I could tell by the way you were screaming. Like, I was I, <laughs> sitting shut up the entire game. I wish I, I like could watch that game. Like be, I wish I could have watched you guys play like your guys' yeah. last game, but it was it was just it, especially because like I had already started losing my voice. And by the end I'm like just like trying to like continue. I'm like, I only have one more like I, like we knew at one point like it was like we were done. And so you're just like croaking at that point but it was so flipping fun because like yeah I know I talked about it like with like Ryan and Josh but like we just weren't we weren't scared you know we were like okay like we're like we're gonna play them like we know that you know why not make it fun why not make it interesting um and like they were good natured about it like I like to crack jokes so it's like they got a balls over and I told Kevin, I'm like, dude, why don't we just like spice it up? Just give us two and let's just see what happens. You know, like um, just stuff like that. And yeah, like that that first point was just insane. Like we like, you know, we had all like they had all four of their captains in and then Jason popped off. I mean, that highlight I set in the channel, like getting like Josh on the cross, which in of itself is an accomplishment and then catching Barry Butler like, on the face, like, glasses are broken, and, like, everybody just, I love that video, because everybody just went nuts, like, <laughs> his glasses exploded, like, and then I said, oh, he's gonna be blind, and then he popped up with another pair of glasses, I was like, where did he come from? <laughs> he was, he was prepared there, I mean, they just, poof, and they just, like, it's it? like, his glasses exploded into dust, <laughs> <laughs> we were ready so it was just yeah it was a very fun like fun game because it's like you you just don't play like we had no pressure on us like you know what I mean like and so yeah it was just a a fun game with them I know that I've heard so many teams come to us and say that you and that both of your teams are so much fun to play or like you guys are people's favorite teams to play because you're just such nice teams like, you just get to have so much fun playing with people. And it leaves such, like, a good impression on the league. And I love seeing it because, like, there used to be so much, like, toxicity going, like, running around in the league. And there was, like, all kinds of craziness always happening and, like, aggression and stuff. And then you get to see all of these teams that are just having so much fun together and just really enjoy each other. And I love seeing that. Oh, yeah. Like, for- seeing that we can be competitive but still be caring is so cool. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, especially hate how I hate playing against both of you guys personally, but like the teams playing each other, it's really fun. Like the Kent game, what at ODC, we were just messing around as much as we could just to have fun and stuff. Like, it was just it was nice to be like, hey, we're still competitive, but like there's still like that respect there, which is nice and like. The funniest thing thing was sorry no, Connor Engel from Maryland. He's such a nice guy. I don't know if you guys ever played Maryland, but it was just I, funny. Like, I remember at one point we were both arguing a call. So we were like arguing with each other. And then like instantaneously, we both just stopped, looked at each other and went, why are we arguing? And then just started dying <laughs> laughing. And then just walked back. <laughs> it was just a mutual like, why are we doing this? And then just like <laughs> talked about it. But like, that's it. Like it makes it so much more fun when it's like, yeah, like we can be, have a good like intensity and a good competitiveness. But like, this is supposed to be fun. Like, yeah. yeah. Still get that big like, laugh of, like, what what mm-hmm. are we doing? That is mm-hmm. why I enjoy so much, like, having our women's league. Like, when we had our women's tournament, it was so much fun going back and forth with people. Because, like, 
when I, I caught you on my throat, and I was so confused when I caught that. I was just like, oh my god, I got it. And I'm just like so excited. I'm like looking at you smiling like, like Ellie, look, I did it. Because like, you're one of my friends, so I was really excited. But also like, you're someone that I find to be like, very much on my level competitively. And I love facing off against you. I hate it, but I love it because it's just so much fun going back and forth. It's a nice love-hate relationship when we put yeah, on the yeah. court against each other. I'm like, ah, no. Like, you'll hit me out and I'm like, ah, that was a really, really good one. Or like, uh, I don't want to throw to either of you because I'm like, you're both going to catch me easily. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm just going to hope they throw to me. Instead. Just like angrily I, complimenting. I don't think I've gotten mad from anybody getting me out in a while. I, like if they give me out, I thought, like, "Oh, that was a good catch. That was a good hit." I'm like, I, I can't argue with you. I mean, that was a good play. Oh yeah. I don't really get. I don't think I get mad about people getting me out unless I'm like frustrated with myself on something. I'm like, "Oh man, I dropped that catch. I should have had that." But yeah. That's about like the most that I get. Like most of these people are my friends. When they hit me out, I'm like, "Good job." <laughs> I'll, like, if I get out by, like, someone, I, like, it's not me mad at them for getting me out or whatever. It's like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Like, I oh, I shouldn't have reached, or, oh, I should have had that. Like, it just slipped out of my hand, or, like, yeah, there's me no throwing. chance of me getting out or staying safe there. And I'm like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> me throwing something straight into Vanessa's chest. As soon as I, like, get it out of my hand, I'm like, yikes. <laughs> and then she catches it, and I'm like, yeah, that was... Yeah, I did that. Chris, so after we had watched, you, like, had commented it somewhere. We we were playing Kent. I think it was at CSU. Katie comes into the huddle. She goes, if somebody throws at Vanessa, Vanessa will catch it, and I will cry. So do not throw it at her. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you had said. <laughs> that is like, something that I did. That <laughs> That's um. something that I've done to a lot of teams. I think most of the teams in the league, they'll, like, ask me, they're like, okay, so what do we need to look at for Kent? And I'm like, please, for the love of everything holy, do not throw, don't solo throw Vanessa. And they're like, oh, no, I can solo throw Vanessa. And I'm like, I promise she's going to hurt that ego of yours right there. That's <laughs> not a good plan. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, like, I told WMU, and they're like, no. And then they had, like, three people in a row solo throw her, and she caught all of them. And I was just like, you see. It was a like, very bad decision on their part. <laughs> Camera pans over and I'm curled up on the floor. Like... <laughs> no, anytime I They're play like... you guys, I'm like, don't solo throw these people. If anything, put like three or four balls on them. Like they will, you put three on, they'll catch two of them. Like, no, you gotta put <laughs> as many control, as you can. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. We played CSU and like she caught six of my guys in a row. I'm like, stop throwing at her. Like, <laughs> no, no. When we played CSU like... at nationals. Evan, like, kept throwing at her sing or single throwing her or something, and just sh she kept catching, and I'm like, can we not solo throw the females on these teams, please? She they will catch the you. Vacuum. Like, anything that goes near her, it's just zoom, zoom, zoom. It's insane. I, I, yeah, I keep saying, like, I've been saying this recently, I was like, if I, if my life depended on somebody catching a ball for me, I'm choosing She's, Sky Lawrence Oh, yeah, for sure. 100%. It's Sky. Oh, <laughs> and it's so baby because like she just like has the most like nonchalant face. She's like throw it like fine, and then like people it's, do. And then it's not like she's she's not like phased by it at all. She's just there, no. and she's like, are you not like like scared of that ball coming at your face or something? Because she'll like go up and like catch the ball if she's at her chest type thing. Like she'll be yeah. on her knees and she'll just stand up like stand up yeah. to catch it. And I'm like. No, I'm I'm dodging that. Like I'm not getting hit in my. I'm sorry. I'm not dying over that. One, one of the funniest things I've ever seen is me and Sky and a few other like uh, CSU players went to Kent's alumni practice, and oh, it was so man. funny. All of the alumni kept solo throwing her. Like all of them, they're like, "Wow, she could catch!" Immediately throws at her again. She had like three in a row once. There was one where she, like, I don't even remember who the first person that threw it is. But, like, one guy threw it, and she immediately snags it. And he's like, yeah, eat that! And then Fitzy throws one. And Fitzy's not a soft thrower by any means. No, she immediately even. snags that one, too. And I'm just like... And the, the guy that had just gotten caught out was like, yeah, keep throwing at her, do it again! <laughs> like, 
screaming <laughs> to throw more at her. She had to have like a solid 20 catches in that practice. It was insane. Yeah. They just they just kept doing it. Every single time they were throwing it straight into her chest like she wasn't going to get it the next time. And I'm like, like guys, it's not a fluke when you get when she catches you. Like oh. For any actual, like, you, Vanessa, Ellie, Catherine, Sky, whoever else, like, it's not a fluke when they catch you. Like, sorry. No. Like, Sometimes Ellie, it is. Sometimes Ellie it is. and Vanessa, <laughs> you guys are both, you guys are both people that I'm, like, terrified to throw at. Because, like, I'm like, I don't, I cannot throw hard enough for these people not to catch me. There's no way. I'm like, if I have I to throw at you guys. getting hit. Huh? It comes from my fear of getting hit. Like, honestly, <laughs> some of the catches that have been, like, my favorite have just come from, like, the fact that I was, like, no, like, I knew that that was coming from my face. So it was, like, you got to duck, and then you just got to try to... Yeah. Oh, yeah. But... All right. Um, let's move forward. Uh, where... <laughs> yeah. where but, okay, at? so... The, I, I know the next question. So, like, you guys have been playing since, what, 2019 and everything, how, like, what do you feel your biggest growth is from your first tournament playing? Um, my biggest growth is literally, like, just coming into the leadership position, because when I first started, it was more of a, hey, this is what you're good at, so this is what you need to do, and don't do anything else, <laughs> like, that's what I was told, and, um, now I've just been more into a leadership role where I'm like facilitating, telling other people what they should do, not in a mean way, but obviously like, you're good at this, focus on this. You're good at this. You should probably try to do this. And so just being able to be that on core leader is actually definitely a drastic change from my freshman year. Yeah. Um, I would say so, like, just like similarly of, I felt like it was kind of like a high school sport that I just, like, started to just, like, understand. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you understand, like, the rules without having to think about it. You understand the strategy and, like, the way things are supposed to kind of look. Like, it's just a very quick mental snapshot that just, like, makes sense. Um, And, yeah, like, I think, (laughs) like, thinking back to, like, my first, like, tournaments, was literally, literally terrified and was always lost in and then would get hit by a team throw and then that would be it. So I think too, just like that like confidence of like, yeah, nobody likes getting team thrown at, but like being able to actually understand like, okay, like let's pick one out and pick one to catch. Like, you know what I mean? And like, I'm not going to get all of them, but yeah, there was a just a very heightened level of like confidence and just kind of court awareness that like developed over, over time. So Yeah. That was wordy, but I hope it made sense. No, it did. I don't know um, what you're saying. Why is it... This is just an observation I've noticed over the last few years. Why is it all the new people are always the last one in? And then they have to absorb a team throw from eight <laughs> people. <laughs> I've noticed that a lot of the new people on teams are always the last one in. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I've noticed that. I think it's probably because it, the, the people that... um are, like, older or usually up, like, moving around and toward the front and, like, looking for things more often, where, like, the new people are, like, a little bit more nervous. I think that and also the fact that, like, other teams know the new, like, like, uh, people who've been in the league already, and they're like, we have to target these people, we need to get them out, otherwise they're gonna catch us or they're gonna, like, uh, knock us out or something. And so, like, not knowing the, like, rookies or the new people, like, it's harder to know, like, oh, can they actually catch, or, like, are they actually a thrower? So, like, they'll leave them last in because then it's, like, they might not be, like, the easy out or whatever, but, like, it's more or less, like, well, we probably have a better shot at this person because they're newer and they're not as experienced as, like, the experienced players on the court. Um, I don't know. I think that's that's my perspective of it, Um, unless you're BG who somehow I get last in and I just... Don't like it. <laughs> I'm lucky enough really to not be in that position anymore. Because <laughs> like my freshman year, I was last in a lot. I didn't even know how that happened. And now I'm first out. <laughs> Everyone's like, you got to get her. Her. Now. I definitely Honestly, remember at the first, uh, the first the Miami tournament, the Red Hawk Classic, looking at BG and they're like, okay, what do we need to do first? I'm like, you have to get Ellie out, but you have to team throw her. You have to team throw uh, Ellie. I, I definitely remember you saying that to us because, like, we it was our first tournament. We didn't have, I think we only had Evan as our captain at the tournament. He did. And we're just like, we're all like 
I think more than half of our starting roster, whatever, was rookies or all of our rookies, I think, almost started or something like that. Like, we're all new. Like, we didn't all get playing time this season before because we had a good, like, graduating class and everything as well. And we're just like, well, who are we supposed to be throwing at? What are we supposed to be doing? And I know Chris was like, just get Ellie out. Team throw her. That's all you got to worry about for the first thing. And then worry about everyone else. And I'm like, that sounds right. Yeah, we, sh- we got to put like four on her. Yeah, I was like, team throw Ellie. And then you have like, number one, the women that go to Miami. I don't know what kind. I don't know what you guys are like on or whatever. But you guys are all insane catchers. It's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I got to get whatever you guys are on. I got to get like, on it. Ugh. Okay. I'm always like, okay, so... The, the women at Miami, you need to team throw, 100%. Please don't solo throw them. And then you have to, like, you need to focus on Ellie, and then you have to just play your game regularly, because Ellie is going to outsmart you. <laughs> You're going to have to put her on the side right now. Yeah. It, it was so much fun, though. Like, seeing, like, it's so cool seeing these people that, like, they're sitting there, and they're not afraid of the guys on these teams. They're not sitting there like, no, we need to focus this guy. They're like, no, no, we gotta focus the girls first. It doesn't matter if you get all the guys out. They're gonna catch them back in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. And our last question is a big and important one, and I think it's a really great one. What do you want um, to tell other women in the league? Like, what do you want them to know or remember? That they're appreciated and somebody's always watching. Somebody's always there to support you, encourage you, and wish you well. Like it might not look at like it at times and it looks like nobody pays attention, especially on your team and stuff, but people are watching, so keep going. Yeah. Um you know, don't be afraid of leadership, like you're going to learn and understand the game just as like, just the same way as like the male rookies who are like joining the team will. Um, so yeah, if you know the game, like don't be afraid to express that, but yeah, just, I would say like really like focus on finding your role. Um, and that's something that I appreciate, like not only Anna, but even the guys on my like freshman team, like Ethan and Reed, like I, like once I kind of established that I wanted to become a catcher, like that was like the skill set that I wanted to focus on. Like, I, like, they worked with me on it, like, constantly, um, and kind of like what Vanessa said, like, they saw it, they, like, helped me appreciate it just as well as, like, showing, like, me that they appreciated it, so, um, yeah, you know, like, we may not be meant to be the hardest throwers, but we have a role, and it's valuable, um, so yeah, don't be afraid to find that. I think that's really great, that's really good advice from both of you. Um, thank you guys a whole lot for coming on the podcast and talking with us. I really wanted to give you guys uh, some type of senior spotlight because, like I said, you've been super influential for a lot of the women in the league. I know that most women in the league know who you guys are, even if you don't know them as well, and they all look up to you and appreciate you and everything that you do. Um, I know that some women have also especially been looking up to you, Vanessa, since you are also a woman of color on top of that. And I know that's meant a lot for some of the women in the league. Um, I personally really appreciate you guys as friends, as friends, and it's been really cool getting to know you guys and see you grow. Because I've played against you and with you, and I enjoy you both very much. Yeah, coming into uh, my first season last year and everything, and obviously BG, we only had myself and our other female page and everything, and this year, just being me basically on the team, it was nice to see you guys on the court and like dominating and like being someone who's like, oh, we actually like we we have to like target both of you guys on your guys' teams, and it's nice to know like that it's like that that like there is that level of like playing and like that level of respect for females on teams and everything. So it was nice to see that, and definitely gonna miss you guys on the court. Um, and everything, but if we do have the women's tournaments, which hopefully we'll have a few planned next semester and everything, please feel free to come out, play on, like, play as an alumni on the teams. We would love to have you, obviously. Um, 
especially growing the new women's league from this year, next year, and the years uh, following, we would love to have you continuing playing with the NCBA as a pinch or no sting team um, whenever we get the chance to. Yeah, I personally would love to see you guys come back around the league and continue to influence women the way that you guys have. Because I know, especially Ellie, you have influenced me personally a whole lot in those scenarios because I remember the first time that I got to play against you and seeing how much you were really doing for your team. I was like, wow, I don't have to be so nervous about playing. I can be just as important to my team. And that was like a really big thing for me. And it was really, really cool to see. So I'm excited for that. (laughs) I'm excited for you guys to continue doing stuff like that. And when women are coming into the NDA, I know that we're supposed to be also having a women's NDA league. And I hope that you continue to influence them too. Because you guys have just been really cool in all aspects. I'm glad. I'm very glad that you guys are my friends. (laughs) Yeah, I'm really glad to have gotten to know both of you guys this year and everything. And then like... The women's match at nationals, like, I don't think I've pl- really played on a lot of teams with both of you guys. I know, Ellie, I played with you in the Falcons one. Vanessa, I think alumni appreciation was the only one I've played with you on the same team, I believe. But, like, yeah. playing on that same team, like, for the women's match was really, like, nice to have both of you guys there and, like, just see how you guys were able to, like, play and, like, not have to <laughs> come up against you, obviously, but, like, it was nice to go out with that again with you guys there and being on the same team and um yeah you guys definitely inspired me with my team and everything and like showing that like females can lead and like it doesn't matter what like the guys are think or whatever and like you guys like I can go show out myself and like still do what I have to do and like inspire other people because you guys did it on your guys' teams which is awesome All right, and with that, I think we're going to conclude our special spotlight episode of the Dodgettes. As I said, thank you guys both for being such positive and influential members in the league and in my life personally. Um, We appreciate your time and your stories and cannot wait for all of the amazing things that we get to see you do and how we get to see you grow as people in the future. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Thank you. As a special thank you to these two women who have had a major impact on our league, we've gotten in contact with some of their friends that had some messages they wanted to share. Cross by number 12, takes out Skiba and a catch. Black is pushing up, takes a throw. Pins by They're pushing up now. Oh, made the mistake of throwing. First year player, first year president. Vanessa Hudson.